What's up, everybody? I'm the Goji Ryu Philosopher, and this video is kind of the companion piece to my most recent video where I compared Judo's striking techniques to those in karate. This time, I'm going to be going in the other direction and taking a look at how karate's throwing techniques stack up against those in Judo. And spoilers for anyone who didn't watch the last video or who doesn't remember my line of reasoning, but the conclusion that I end up with is going to be that Judo's throws are superior, for the same reason that I concluded that karate was superior at striking. Namely, that our karate dojos rarely, if ever, practice the historical throwing techniques that used to exist within our various arts. However, I do have a feeling that we could really benefit from training more intensely in those that we do have, as well as maybe even stealing one or two throws from judo's repertoire. But to know what to steal, first we have to understand what throws that we have and what throws that we're missing. In the last video, I used Kawaishi Minkinosuke's book, My Method of Self-Defense, as my basis for what strikes were commonly found within Judo, partially because being a single book it was a relatively self-contained list of techniques, but also partially because the historical nature of the book meant that the techniques contained were probably part of training before the advent of modern combat sports, which have led arts to adopt different techniques from other styles when they see that they're effective. So for this video, I'm actually going to be making use of three separate karate books, which make reference to the throws and takedowns that were historically used by karateka in the past. The first of these is going to be, of course, my old standby, Toguchi Seikichi's Okinawan Goju Ryu 2, which talks a little bit about throws and tripping techniques in the context of his Kiso Kumite sets and Saifa Bunkai. The next book that I'm going to be making use of is Miyazato Eiichi's book, Okinawa Den Goju Ryu Karate Do, which also makes reference to the throwing techniques in the context of a broader discussion of katabunkai. And the final book, as well as the only one that explicitly goes outside of Goju Ryu, is a very interesting book that was recommended to me by a friend called The Study of China Hand Techniques by Itoman Morinobu, a karateka who sadly has only left a very small mark on karate's history, but whose written materials leave us with the most thorough understanding of the pre-sport appearance of kumite and sparring, and whose book contains the most thorough description of the throws and takedown techniques in karate that I've ever been able to get my hands on. Using these three books, as well as my own personal experience, as my guide, I'm going to be taking a look at the historical throws that used to be incorporated into karate to see where they stack up with those from judo, and crucially, where they fall short. Once again, let's get into it. On the off chance that I have attracted any non-karate crowds with this video, or if some of my viewers are relatively new to the karate side of YouTube, I first want to say that yes, karate does indeed have throws, and even grappling and groundwork as part of its original historical practice. Prior to the movement of martial arts and fighting traditions into a sports context, what Raul Sanchez Garcia would call the sportization phase, it was very common for fighting traditions to include all of the modalities that are now being resynthesized in the modern MMA movement, those being striking, grappling, and the transition between those two modalities. As I mentioned in the last video, judo itself has its own strikes, which were in turn largely eliminated when it underwent its sportization phase, nowadays existing only to the margins of most people's practice. Karate's throws were much more prominent at a time when the art was primarily understood as a close quarters fighting practice, as opposed to the longer distance that modern kumite competitors fight at. The arts from which karate was developed came from a wide variety of sources, many of them rooted in the practice that was brought over from Fujian, China, and they were not the only martial arts tradition to exist on Okinawa at that time. The Okinawan martial arts traditions of Torite and Okinawan Sumo are just two of the native grappling traditions that karate's predecessors had to contend with, and the common Okinawan game of Tegumi meant that even the young chimpira who a karateka might have to defend themselves against on a dark road one night would probably have at least a working knowledge of throws, joint locks, and pinning techniques. Therefore, a working knowledge of these techniques was mandatory for anyone who wanted to not get robbed, and was also a vital part of any martial arts tradition for those who trained them. Like how judo lost its strikes when it started to become a sport, karate began to shed its grappling and throwing techniques when it was introduced to Japan and was shaped to fit the mold of Japanese martial tradition. The native Japanese arts that made up judo and jujitsu had already filled the niche of throwing and ground grappling, and had begun to lose some of their connection to striking techniques. Karate was chosen by circumstance to be the Japanese analog to boxing, 
and it began to remove those techniques that were already covered by other Japanese martial arts. But the throws and grapples in karate aren't truly lost. Rather, like with judo strikes, they exist in the form of karate's kata. So how am I going to compare karate's throws to judo's throws? As a karateka, I'm much less familiar with judo's nagewaza than I was with karate's atemiwaza for last video, so I've decided to enlist the help of the founder himself, Tano Jigoro, and his book Kodokan Judo, which I think is probably the best way to get as comprehensive as possible of a list of judo's throws. His presentation of throws in that book is how I'm going to structure my blow-by-blow, -blow, and whenever I make a reference to one of my three karate books, I'm going to provide a little text crawl citation in the corner so that you can know what I'm referencing. Now, let's get started. The main throwing techniques of judo are listed as the gokyo no waza. Group 1 of the gokyo no waza in judo contains the deashi harai, hizuguruma, sasai tsuri komiyashi, ukigoshi, osotogari, ogoshi, ouchigari, and seoi nage throws. And boy oh boy does karate have just so many of these. The sweep while turning in saifa is similar both to the deashi harai and sasai tsuri komiyashi techniques, and both osotogari and ouchigari are mentioned by Itoman as tripping techniques. Ukigoshi and ogoshi, which are very similar throws to each other, are also mentioned by Itoman, who calls them both hip throws. And the most important throw, the seoi nage, shows up in all three of these books, with Miyazato using it as a bunkai for kururunfa kata, Toguchi referencing it in one of his kiso kumite sets, and Itoman calling it the backriding throw. Group 2 starts out with the kosotogari and kouchigari techniques, both of which are fairly common interpretations that I've seen of karate's ashibarai, and then includes the koshiguruma, the hip wheel throw that's mentioned by Itoman. In fact, all of the harai techniques in this group including the okuriashi harai and the harai goshi, have been grouped together into the sweeping techniques that Itoman mentions as being part of karate's native tripping techniques. So let's look at the remaining three, tsurikomi goshi, tai otoshi, and the very famous uchimata. These first two don't show up explicitly in karate or in any of the books that I have, and although they're similar enough to some other throws that I could try and make the argument that karate includes them, I'm going to count these two techniques, along with Hizaguruma from Group 1, as being the first properly unaccounted for techniques. However, for Uchimata, there is not a single karate technique that I can find that comes close to matching it, making it the most unambiguously judo-specific throw that we've encountered so far. Group 3 is starting to look pretty bad for karate. Kosotogake and Tsurikomiashi are both variations on sweeping, so Karate has them, but doesn't generally classify them as separate techniques, instead grouping them into just general sweeping techniques. Itoman specifically mentions the kataguruma and yoko otoshi throws, but there are four group three throws, the tsurigoshi, ashiguruma, hanegoshi, and tomoenage, that appear nowhere in any of the books that I have or in the practice of any karateka that I know. However, fortunately for us, group four performs at least somewhat better for karate. The only technique in group 4 of the gokyo no waza that karate is missing to my knowledge is the utsuri goshi, a counter hip throw. Sumigayashi and tani otoshi, two throws where the tori throws themselves onto their back, are very similar to a sequence in Toguchi's Kisokumite Daigo, although he recommends using your hand a lot like in Tsukui Nage, which is a throw that also shows up in Miyazato's interpretation of Sepai Kata. Oguruma is mentioned to be a variant of Harai Goshi, and since Itoman has already provided us with the citation for that throw, he also provides us with citations for the Soto Makikomi and Hane Makikomi throws, which he calls winding neck strikes and arm throws. He even calls the Uki Otoshi the heaven throw, although he personally recommends dropping the opponent straight on their head. And for the last group, group 5, we have Osoto Guruma, Ukiwaza, Yoko Wakare, Yoko Guruma, Ushiro Goshi, Uranage, Sumi Otoshi, and Yoko Gake. The first of these is covered by Itoman's writing throw, and Yoko Wakare, as well as Yoko Gake, are covered by the side sacrifice throw that Itoman lists. Uranage doesn't directly map onto one or the other of Itoman's techniques, but is very similar to how he describes the yielding throw and the ox throw, and is something that I would say is a likely interpretation of Shisochin's penultimate section, although Miyazato's book, which is the only one that deals with Shisochin in any depth, 
doesn't mention this. But karate definitely doesn't have ukiwaza, nor can I recognize yoko guruma or ushiro goshi anywhere in karate. So that makes for 28 out of the 40 of judo's gokyo no waza, which have some equivalent in karate. This isn't too bad of a score, it's actually about a 70% record, but there are two bits that I have up until now left out, the shin meisho no waza and the techniques that karate has that judo seems to not have. The former are those techniques that were added to Judo's syllabus between the creation of the Gokyo no Waza in 1895 and the publication of this book in 1986, which means that it's almost a century of new techniques. And the latter group contains a lot of similar techniques to the former one, and is really just the list of the miscellaneous techniques that I can't really find anywhere in the Kodokan book. Alright, so for the Shin Mei Show, first we have the Moro Tegari, which is a double leg takedown, which is very similar to Itoman's ox throw, with the exception that Uke falls backwards onto their own back rather than being thrown over Tori's back. The Kuchiki Taoshi is a single leg technique that Miyazato glosses as Ashidori, although Ashidori could also be applied to the Kibisu Gaishi technique if you seize the heel rather than the knee, and exists in Saifa and Kururumfa. Uchimata Sukashi, just like the non-slipping version of Uchimata, is unique to Judo, as is the dakiyage, the lift from open guard that's my personal go-to whenever I'm on the ground grappling with a smaller opponent. Tsubame Gaishi, not the Sasaki Kojiro version, is another foot sweep which, although I can't find it explicitly in any of my karate books, I remember being taught as a child in my dojo. And Osoto and Ouchi Gaishi are both responses to the Osoto and Ouchi Gari techniques that we've already mentioned. In fact, all of the Gaishi techniques are simply responses to the techniques that they were named after, and the Kouchi Gaishi is comprised simply of a step and a twist that Toguchi drills under the term Taihideri, meaning literally body twisting. Hanegoshi Gaishi, Hadaegoshi Gaishi, and Uchimata Gaishi are all versions of sweeps that we've established that karate definitely has, but the side sacrifice techniques are where it really starts to get interesting for me. Fans of Jesse Enkamp will probably recognize the Tanibasami as an integral part of dog boxing, and it's also very similar to what Itoman refers to as a binding trip. The other side sacrifice technique, Kawazugake, is called out by name by Itoman in his section on binding trips, where he implies that both judo and karate got it from Japanese sumo. After that, all that really remains are the three makikomi variations, and while karate definitely has some makikomi-style throws and takedowns, these three specifically rely on the kicking out motion from Uchimata that karate definitely does not have. And now, for the much, much, much shorter list of the throws that karate has that I couldn't find in judo. Given that this book is probably not a comprehensive list of judo's throws, I'm sure that judo has these techniques somewhere or another, but I really wanted to get karate within striking distance, pun intended, of judo's throwing efficiency. By my estimate, we're now at about 40 out of 57, which is around the same percentage that karate had before we interpreted the Shin Mei Shou no Waza. So what does karate have to offer us? Well, Miyazato presents us with a rotating twist of the opponent's seized arms, which he calls Hineri Nage, but other than that, he doesn't seem to have anything to offer us that wasn't already covered in Judo's syllabus. Toguchi mentions a hammer throw, which looks a lot like an Ippon Seoi Nage without the Seoi part, and seems to lock the arm, making it a break that turns into a throw if the uke recognizes the pain and chooses not to try and resist it. He also interprets the final sequence of Saifa as something that looks a little bit like a makikomi throw, but it seems to be more effective in his interpretation as a choking technique rather than a throw. So of course, we're left once again with our good friend Itoman, who lists the widest variety of karate throws. However, the only one of these throws not covered by judo is his stomping trip, where you pin the opponent's foot and then push them backwards so that they can't step and regain their balance. I guess that I should give an honorable mention to Itoman's supine throw, which is described so vaguely that I can't actually tell what it's supposed to look like, but might be the closest that karate gets to a tomoe nage. I think, though, with this rundown, we've finally reached the end of our comparison. And it only took me about 2,000 words to get here. Phew. <sighs> Okay, I need a break, and you probably do too. Writing this script, I can already tell that I'm probably going to be winded and panting during this part of filming, and I bet you that I've already cut out like five or six separate instances of me messing up a take and swearing in the middle. But this next section is going to be pretty easy. Judo's throws are much better than karate's throws. 
Assiduous viewers will have probably noticed by now that while I was doing my comparison, I used some techniques like the foot sweep as analogs for several of Judo's different throws. Now, it is probably true that some of Judo's techniques are just variations on a general theme, but the fact that they have so many different minute variations is an indication that they've probably been studied in a lot more detail in Judo. I said at the outset of this video that I was going to come to the conclusion that Judo has better throws than Karate, and if you remember the conclusion of the last video, you'll know that I think that even if Karate nominally had every last one of Judo's throws as part of its curriculum, as long as we don't practice them in as much depth as Judo does, we will never be even remotely near to their level of proficiency. And the fact of the matter is that we don't practice our throws in anywhere near the detail as Judo does for those styles that even practice throws at all. However, there is one last thing that I'd like to take into account. You see, even karateka from 80 years ago recognized that karate clearly had to take some cues from Judo when it came to expanding their throwing and takedown techniques. Some of the greatest karateka, and especially the greatest practitioners of goju Ryu, knew how to recognize when there was another art that did something better than they did. Miyazato Eiichi-sensei specifically sought out judo training, on the recommendation of Miyagi himself, in order to supplement his karate and add the nage waza for which judo was known. During his lifetime, Miyazato-sensei achieved a 7th dan rank in judo, and was an accomplished judo competitor. He continued to teach his judo as part of his curriculum at the Jundokan throughout the rest of his life, and was posthumously awarded an 8th dan rank on his death. Another karate style, wado ryu, draws heavy inspiration from its founder's study of Shindo Yoshin Ryu, which is an offshoot of one of Judo's predecessors, the Tenjin Shinyo Ryu style. Karate's history is filled with masters who sought out Judo and Jiu-Jitsu, and even who developed close friendships with Kano-sensei himself, all in an effort to help supplement karate with the techniques that it was missing. We can try all we want to find karate equivalents of Judo throws, or alternative throwing and takedown techniques, within the tight confines of the techniques that we specifically consider traditional karate. But the best way to actually get those effective techniques into our karate, and the way that all those traditional karateka incorporated their throws into their practice, was to just head over to a judo dojo and learn them from the source. That's right, these last two videos have just been an extended argument why, if you want to keep traditional karate, whatever that means, alive, then the only way that you can do that is cross-train. It's simply the most traditional thing there is. Thank you for watching the second part of my extended comparison between Judo and Karate. If you liked it, please like the video, and leave a comment letting me know what art you think complements Karate the best. For my money, I'm gonna say that Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu would be my choice if, of course, I could only cross-train in one other style. If you enjoyed this video enough to want to see more videos by me, then the traditional way of doing that is by subscribing to this channel. And as you probably already know, turning on notifications when you do so will let YouTube send you notifications so that when I post a new video, you'll know. As always, I've been the Goju Ryu Philosopher, and don't forget your Kuzushi.